do you have a favorite, like, fantasy sword and sorcery type movie? Oh. It's it's a genre that I'm a big fan of, but I don't know well, now how I'm, deep your I'm love goes. struggling to think of ones outside of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That's fair. It's a biggie, and that would probably be my fave. Oh, no. Uh, do animated films count? Sure. Quest for Camelot. I loved that Quest movie as a Camelot. kid. Quest for Camelot. Yeah. I don't know why I liked it. I haven't seen it in so long. Does that have good, like, epic, epic fights? Probably not. It's an animated comedy. <laughs> <laughs> an animated comedy can still have epic battles. You're right. I'm sure there is uh, towards the end with the villain who is... Sure. Is the two-headed um, dragon or... No, the two-headed dragon is uh, like brothers that got fused together by accident <gasps> hate that yeah it's kind of <laughs> morbid <laughs> yeah absolutely welcome to butter no parsnips every week on butter no parsnips your hosts emily moyers and kyle imperator take you on an adventure through the weird wacky wonderful and sometimes even wicked world of one wayside word Strange characters, delightful bits, and general joyousness abound. Join them as they test each other's etymological expertise. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. I'm Kyle Imperator. And I'm Emily Moyers. And Emily has for me what I can only assume is a quest. Based on her introduction. I do have a quest. It is a quest to f- guess the definition of this word. Uh, lay it on me as mystically as you can. All right. Your word is... <laughs> oh, I think you've confused mystically with, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Drunkenly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stomach upsettedly. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Your word is swinge. S W I N G E swinge swinge. <laughs> I mean, based on our introduction, uh, right off the bat. I, uh, no, I'll, let me before I before I throw don't, don't out any wild it just guesses. Yet. <laughs> uh, can I guess the? Is this a verb? It is usually a verb. Yes, can okay, also so, be a noun, but usually a verb. So something can be a swinge, but you can also swinge. Correct. Uh, does this have an English background? I know it's an English word. Does it come through English? It does. It comes from Middle English, and then there are roots in Old English and Proto-Indo-European. Love that word that we came up with. <laughs> you know, they said, hey, let's just put all the prefixes in it. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, swinge sounds very onomatopoeic to me. It sounds oh. like, uh, you know... What happens when you swing a sword or a lightsaber? Swinge, <laughs> swinge. <laughs> Just the noise it makes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does it does it have anything to do with weaponry? I mean, honestly, Kyle, I'm tempted to give it to you just based Whoa. on what happens when you swing a sword. Oh. But do you want to see if you can get closer? Do you want like a clue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me the the hint. All right. Your your hint is battle, but you were already there. I would say it is it is something specific that happens when you swing a sure, sword. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> is it like a specific motion of swinging the sword, like used in sword combat? It is not. I would say it is an effect of swinging a sword, maybe. Oh, is it giving someone a gash? It is to strike hard, to beat, or to thrash. Oh. But I'll give it to you. I'll play the victory music. You were right there. Thank you so much. So like I said, this word comes from Middle English. It originates with the Old and Middle English word swenge, S-W-E-N-G-E, which in turn comes from the Proto-Germanic root swangwiana, I think is how you say it. I I don't care. I did my best. That's the best. (laughs) I want that to be how it's said. (laughs) Say it again. Swangwiana? I love it. I don't know if it's right. And there's no one alive who can tell me (laughs) it's not. (laughs) But that word meant something like to swing or to waver. And it shows up in the Gothic word offswangwion, which (gasps) meant to despair. Oh. Yeah. I like the idea of the Goths having a word for despair. (laughs) Yes. 
<laughs> so the word swanga in Old and Middle English meant to shake or shatter or to smite, dash, or fling. I gotta be honest, I don't know if I really know what smite means. To strike down, to kill, but in the most dramatic fantasy way. <laughs> oh, okay. Or in the most godly way. I remember it from A Knight's Tale. Sure, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I but I never like... I always like heard it in context and was like, oh, that must be, you know, whatever. So Kyle, can you think of another modern word that might have evolved from swenga, meaning to shake or shatter or to smite, dash or fling? I mean, besides swing? You got it, Kyle. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So the oldest definition of the word swing is to scourge, whip, flog, or beat. Oh. Which is basically the same as swinge. And a couple other definitions of swinge are to brandish, flourish, or lash, and also to whirl around, which are like kind of similar to swing. Definitely. Can we go back to where you said to scourge <laughs> to scourge because you're you're using a lot of these words here that i <laughs> know of and i'm realizing i i don't know if i could ever define to i is scourging an action <laughs> uh yeah according to miriam webster to scourge means to whip i mean this is fun yeah so there's i mean but that's sort of the theme is there's a lot of words with like overlapping meanings here so swing and swinge have a similar set of definitions. And looking at the quotes from Middle English, the spellings were, of course, all over the place for both of them. So I think they were kind of just the same word, you know, used sure. interchangeably or just as one word. But over time, the spellings and the pronunciations and usages drifted apart until we were left with these two distinct words, swing and swinge. That's really interesting. So it's like, it was like, Kind of sort of one word that had multiple meanings. And then over time, the meaning separated into individual words. Yeah, or at least like certain meanings got more associated with one word or the other. Like you can use swing or swinge to mean all of these things. But I would say swing is more associated with like something moving back and forth right. or like movement. And then swinge is more associated with like combat. <laughs> yeah, parries. So this phenomenon of words originating from oh. the same word, but differentiating over time. Mm -hmm. In linguistics, those pairs of words are referred to as etymological twins or doublets. Oh. And this is something we have run across at least once on this podcast, but never named them as doublets. Can you think of any examples, Kyle? A uh, doublet. What? Well, isn't a doublet like uh like a tunic? What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let me rephrase the question. Kyle, no, 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 can no. Can you I, remember I, any pairs of words that come from the same ancestor but differentiated over time? Why, thank you, Emily. Uh, let me think about that harder than I did in the previous <laughs> answer. <laughs> Kyle, it was your episode. You talked all about it. You got it in you. I know it. Uh, <laughs> We did a lot of episodes, Emily. We did, Kyle. Can you think of two words that stemmed <laughs> from the Latin root smaragdus? Oh, yes. Smaragd and emerald. Yes, smaragd and emerald. Both two different words for the green gemstone that came from the same Latin root. As our good friend Arna Christensen put it, they speciated. They speciated. <laughs> so... It's a doublet if they have like a common ancestor. Basically, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. But And like kind of mean the same thing in modern usage. They don't have to mean the same thing. They are just words that came from the same root and usually came to English through different language channels. Channels, yes. Yeah. So let me give you some other examples because there are yeah. lots of examples of Please. doublets in English. In some cases, they are synonymous and the connection between them is not hard to see. Like, for example, pyre and fire. Oh, Both yeah. come from the Proto-Indo-European word payer, and they mean almost the same thing and they sound pretty similar. Yeah. But there's also words like host and guest. What? Yeah, those words both come from the Proto-Indo-European ghostis, and they're not synonyms, but they are pretty direct antonyms. So they are closely related, and they do sort of sound similar. Yeah, very much so. 
They come from ghostus. Ghostus. And if you're wondering if ghost also yeah. comes from that word, it does not. Ghost comes from a different <laughs> Proto-Indo-European <laughs> word, which sounds more like guest, which is wow, crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Uh, wh- what does ghostus mean? Ghostus just meant host or guest or stranger. Oh, wait. Wait, just so they of, use that word to catch all, all of those things? Just to catch all. <laughs> just any person? <laughs> and then I guess over time it differentiated into host and guest. Yeah. Because we needed words for that. <laughs> we did, yeah. It was just uh, like, ghosts. this is some person in the transaction of a stranger <laughs> at a home. Could be any one of the people anyone. involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> the ghostess with the mostess, right? That's what they always used to say you in Proto Indo Europe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But there are a lot of doublets where the connection between them is not so obvious. Mm-hmm. I'll give mm-hmm. you an example, Kyle. Sovereign and soprano. Oh. Can you guess what the uh, what the umbrella word might have been there? We uh, you're asking me for the Proto Indo European word or uh, in this case uh, it was a Latin word, but yeah. A Latin word. So, any, any speculations? So, so, so Well, you don't so, have to guess the so word. Guess what it might so, have meant. What oh, meaning king. connected? Uh, no, but it it highest. Uh, yeah, uh, it was the Latin word superanus, which meant high super, above, high as in above. super, and then above. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So if you think about like a sovereign rules on high and then the soprano is the highest voice in the choir wow the sopranos are the rulers of the choir (laughs) (laughs) another pair of words kyle plant and clan clan like a family yeah like the irish sense of the word you know (laughs) yeah or clash of clans okay um oh this one's a little abstract plant yeah plant and and clan (laughs) Clan. I mean, you know, we always talk about planet. I don't know. I don't know. I got nothing. It's it's tough. They both come from the Latin word planta, which means sprout or shoot. I guess as in like your descendants sprouted from you. Oh, interesting. Where did the C come from? So this highlights that characteristic of doublets, which is that they usually differentiate because they travel via different languages. Right. Plant comes to us through Latin and Old French. So, you know, all Romance languages. Whereas clan came to English through Scottish Gaelic. And sure. it was not unheard of when Latin words were borrowed into Gaelic, P's got turned into C's for some reason. Oh, interesting. They, they were, were like just like, this is like that. Yeah. This is how we set our language apart. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we can't, we don't do, we don't do peace sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Clan. Hey, that's really interesting and yeah. very helpful for when I'm trying to guess Scottish roots in other words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's got a C in it, it might be a secret P. <laughs> it might be a secret P, which is <laughs> also P. what I do when I've drank <laughs> Too much water, but I can't leave a meeting. (laughs) So, swinge, (laughs) getting back to swinge, it does have other meanings in addition to the few that I've mentioned already. And I want to just run through them quickly because the definitions are all pretty different, but there is like a logical train of thought from one to the next. Yeah, sure. So, as I mentioned earlier, swinge can mean to beat, to flog, or to whip. Stemming metaphorically from that usage, swinge can also mean to chastise or to reprimand. Sure. As in to verbally flog. (laughs) Yeah, right, right, right. I'm trying to imagine what context that would have been used in. Like, I guess... I don't know. I'm just picturing Catholic schools. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of times it was used like in reference to punishment, either physical or verbal. You know, sure, hey, yeah. is the olden times. The olden times. Yeah, 1930, yeah. 40, <laughs> 70. Yeah. But we've also got swinge as a noun, meaning power, authority, or influence. Oh. And that's often phrased like to bear swinge or to have swinge over someone else. Oh, like to have sway. Yes, exactly. Is that where we get to have sway from? Because sway is pretty close to swing, huh? Sway is from Dutch. Swayen. Swayen. Low German. Yeah. As a noun, swing can also mean freedom of action, which I think stems from the last one because it's like having the power to do what you want. 
Yeah, that, that makes sense. And this usage is also usually worded as to have swi- like to have his swinge or to give swinge to his desires. Oh, like wow, that. this is like the Swiss army knife of words, huh? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I feel like you could really use it in a lot of different contexts. Yes. And from there, swinge can also mean impulse or inclination, as in oh. of her own swinge, meaning of her own accord. I love that. Yeah. And then I have one more I want to mention, completely unrelated to all the others I just said. As both a verb and a noun, swinge can also mean singe, probably by mistake. <laughs> but definitely by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> just it was misspelled or misheard or something so that can also mean singe <laughs> someone just with a some sort of accent oh i swinged myself <laughs> and then just was taken for granted forever for eternity kyle i feel like i haven't really talked about how swinge is used in context very much I, I, yeah, I would love to hear some more context because I'm, I'm trying to imagine it and it's, it's all over the place. Well, let me give you a really, really, really good sample okay. sentence I'm to help so you excited. just get a feel for it, you know? <laughs> so, Kyle, if you Google the word swinge, mm-hmm. it defines it as to strike hard or to beat. And then it has a sample sentence, and I quote, Did she not swinge the dragon of rip snorting inflation? And Kyle, if you then Google that quote to try and find if it was a quote from something, because Uh a wholly specific Batman. Yeah, it sounds like (laughs) from like the Obama war room when he was talking about (laughs) Janet Yellen. Absolutely. (laughs) But all I could find were like word forums of people asking, what the hell is this sample sentence on Google? (laughs) So funny. Everybody has that thought. There's Uh, no explanation for this. So funny. So like, I don't know, Kyle, what do you think this is talking about? Because we have no answers. (laughs) I think it was in Quest for Camelot. I think we have to go watch that movie again. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What they they left out was the two-headed dragon of rip snorting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What the heck? What the heck? Yeah. Um, I mean, I I feel like, okay, like first off, <laughs> when you're using an example sentence, don't also include a crazier word that <laughs> might need its, <laughs> its own, own definition. Like, rip snorting, if anyone is wondering, means strong or intense or excellent or very good, which means we all need to start using rip snorting. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I... I think of it as in the sense of like a rip snorting good time, you know? That's, Absolutely. I, I, but not that's of inflation. I, <laughs> yeah, um, a crazy sentence. I, I Maybe the dragon of inflation is a giant inflatable dragon that they're talking about. <laughs> that was, it was pierced. Slain. Yeah, it was, it was a Macy's Day parade balloon <laughs> that got out of control and they had to take it down. Yeah, absolutely. But it it turns out, Kyle, this sentence might not be completely crazy because I found two pretty noteworthy quotations that have something in common with this sentence. Oh, okay. One comes courtesy of the bard himself, my man Billy Shakes. Billy Shakes. (laughs) This is a quote from King John one of William Shakespeare's early history plays in which one of the characters mentions, quote, St. George that swinged the dragon. Oh, who's St. George? St. George is a character from Christian tradition. He's not in the Bible, but he's just in like Christian tales. <laughs> he, he hung around the Bible. <laughs> yeah, he hung around the Bible. He was like, in, you know, looking through the window, like Bible adjacent. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but St. George, most famous for rescuing a princess and slaying the dragon which had taken her captive. One of the seminal examples of literally the most classic adventure trope. I mean, incredible, but now I'm concerned confused maybe upset (laughs) that the bible isn't a high fantasy novel (laughs) (laughs) well he wasn't in the bible (laughs) i I know but if we just put saint george in it would have been (laughs) it would have been (laughs) uh yeah interesting side note kyle swinged in the text of the play it is spelled s-w-i-n-d-g apostrophe d and i found a lot of quotes with like extra letters or apostrophes thrown in to like differentiate it from swinged from swinged yeah yeah <laughs> is that maybe why we evolved swung was to 
<laughs> was because it was too close to swinged. To swinged, yeah. So a lot of writers would go with swinged. Swinged. <laughs> St. George, classic dragon slayer. Classic dragon slayer. And my other quote comes from another giant of the literary world, John Milton. Do you know who he's most famous oh. for, Kyle? Uh, well, I, I, I can't. I know I know it in, inside of me, but I'll just make a joke instead. Okay. Um, him and his brother Bradley created Monopoly. Yeah, you got it. I'm uh, sorry, you think it's Milton and Bradley? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, John Milton, most famous for his epic poem, <laughs> Paradise Lost. Oh, yes, 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 yes. But this quote is from a much shorter poem of his. He did write other poems. This one is on the morning of Christ's nativity, oh. which talks about, quote, the old dragon underground in straighter limits bound and wroth to see his kingdom fail, swinged the scaly horror of his folded tail. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> Yes, and the speaker there, it's about to get more awesome. The speaker is referring to Satan thrashing his tail down in hell after he was o'erthrown. Emily, the Bible (laughs) is a high fantasy novel. (laughs) This also was not in the Bible. Satan's the dragon. (laughs) Satan is the dragon, yes. I love it. What's the name of that poem again? On the Morning of Christ's Nativity. I love this. I want to like set that to music or something <laughs> it's probably ripe for it but as you oh, notice so kyle long. all of those sentences use swinge in conjunction with dragons yeah is that like on purpose is that a, a, a trend for swinged i mean maybe a little i'll confess that i was seeking out quotations with dragons in them <laughs> Um, Emily says, are... I found a word. The first thing that I do is search that <laughs> word with dragon and see if there are any well, hits. <laughs> when the first thing I see is, did she not swinge the dragon of rip snorting inflation? <laughs> yeah, is, then yes. That is fair. That is fair. <laughs> you didn't look up swinged in regards to inflation? That would have been so much fun. <laughs> yeah, really fun. But the ones I found were both quotations from very famous authors, which I think means something, maybe. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. There's some sort of lineage there, you know? Yeah. So so the real point of it is, is that Swinge has a lot of different usages in a lot of different contexts, but its best usage, I think, Swinge is a word meant for epic battles and slaying dragons. Yeah, I completely agree, Emily. It sounds epic. It's like the more, yeah. it's like the epic older brother of swing. Like you swinge the jabberwock with the vorpal sword. Yeah. You know? Like it's yeah. that caliber of word. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Well, Kyle, I just came up with my own sample sentence, but uh, you got one cooking in your brain. Can you use swinge in a sentence? Can I use, are you asking me, Emily? You're looking at me in my eyes right now i am not but and you're asking me can i use swinged in a sentence of course i can Uh use swinged in a sentence okay and i'm definitely not delaying this sentence okay (laughs) okay um i moved to england so that i could bring (laughs) my product onto the british version of shark tank where I swinged at the dragons and <laughs> got a restraining order because of it. I'm sorry. Why did that? Why was that story predicated on it being the British version of Shark Tank? Because the British version is called the Dragon's Den. Oh, but aren't they? Oh, they're sharks in America, yeah. but they're dragons yeah. in England. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Wow. I mean, beautiful. <laughs> And you, it you used it exactly how I want it used. So <laughs> it's, it's delightful. It's just like the dragon of inflation, you know? Yeah, the dragon <laughs> Ridiculous. of capitalism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emily, I love this word. It's so good. And I think all of our sword and sorcer- sorceling <laughs> listeners out there should cultivate swinge into yeah. their vocabulary. Hey, Kyle, do you want to play a game? Emily, I would love to. Is it about dragons? It is. <laughs> I, how did I know? <laughs> I have written here, Kyle, I've got a great game. It's got almost nothing to do with this word, but <laughs> yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm all for it. <laughs> yep. And the name is terrible too. Ready? Swinges the scaly horror of how many tales? Oh, God. <laughs> 
Is this just you're going to give me a number of tails and I have to guess the dragon? Uh, the reverse. Um, so what? As, no. <laughs> as I said earlier, to me, this word is best used in the context of slaying dragons. And dragon myths are super fun to look at because they're nearly as old as civilization itself and they crop up all over the world. But dragons in different parts of the world it can be pretty different. <laughs> so for this game, I'm going to name you a type of dragon, and I want you to tell me the arrangement of limbs on that dragon. Oh, like all where different. they are and how many they got? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How many right, legs, I mean, how many wings? Livers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many <laughs> uh, brains? <laughs> oh. <laughs> first one, Kyle. First one's pretty easy. Ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think Babylonian dragons look like? Are they just like the classic dragons, four legs and wings and a tail and a, and a long neck? Yeah, I don't know for sure about the long neck, but four legs and two wings was the answer I was looking for there. Oh, okay. Most famous of the dragons of Babylon, ancient Babylon, was the dragon goddess Tiamat, or Tiamat, who also appears in D&D lore. Oh. But in D&D, she's got four legs, two wings, and five heads. Whoa, she's like a hydra. <laughs> I, I mean, wh at what point did we get away from having dragon goddesses in our religions? <laughs> like, we got to get those back. <laughs> we do. First, we're not putting St. George into the Bible, and now this? <laughs> How do we fix this? <laughs> How do we fix this? Kyle, speaking of five heads, mm -hmm. heads are important in this next one. Kyle, what do you think a Bulgarian Lamia looks like? Oh. A Lamia is a type of dragon. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a snake. It doesn't have any limbs, right? It's just got like five heads or something like that. So No, 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 no. <gasps> it's got arms. It's got arms, but no legs. It's got like a snake tail. So what you are probably thinking of is the ancient Greek Lamia, who has the upper body of a woman, the lower body of a serpent. But they're derived from that myth. There is a separate bulgarian myth of a lamia oh, that looks way different <laughs> the bulgarians just said uh we think we can do this better <laughs> yes and, and that it looks one way different i'll just tell you it's got four legs two wings similar to a regular dragon but uh anywhere from three to nine heads oh uh, <laughs> what now <laughs> yeah and in the bulgarian story of saint george he fought a lamia specifically <laughs> I mean, of course. And cut off all its heads. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I mean, we might as well just come up with a dragon for every country out there and have St. George. He's like Sa uh, Santa Claus, you know? He's <laughs> yeah, just slightly yeah. different in every iteration. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and the D&D &D St. George fought Tiamat with five heads. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You might be able to pull it back with this one. What do you think a Chinese dragon, otherwise known as a long dragon, looks like? Oh, those guys are real, real, real long. They are. They're basically like if that guy from the NeverEnding Story was scaly instead of furry. <laughs> and I want to say they've got six legs. Incorrect. They've got four <laughs> legs. How many wings? But they're all stumpy legs. Oh, they got more than two wings? No. No, they got zero wings. They got zero wings. You are they correct. They just fly because it w that's, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, four legs, zero wings, and long body was what I was looking for there. And speaking of long body, they are also called long dragons after the Chinese word, which I think is pronounced long which means dragon and likely comes from the Proto-Sino-Tibetan word for thunder. Oh, interesting. Mm. Thunder and dragons. Thundering dragons, yeah. Thundering dragons. Is that, th those are the dragons that you see in every 60s through early 2000s <laughs> movie that has to go through Chinatown at some yes, point, right? Absolutely. During a festivity. Absolutely. Yep, you okay. got it. <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah, it's somehow always Chinese New Year and there's yeah. always a parade with the Chinese yeah. dragon. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Spot on. All right, Kyle. What about the English wyvern or the European wyvern? Okay. Those guys have like wings instead of arms, but the, and they like stand upright. They're like King Ghidorah, right? Sure. How many legs? How many wings? Two legs, two wings. Perfect. Spot on. It's like if, if, if you cut off the arms of Charizard. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yeah, so the term wyvern originated in Middle English, meaning serpent, but its appearance was later solidified in European heraldry as having two legs, two wings, as opposed to a dragon, which has four legs, two wings in heraldry, and an amphipter, which has no legs, two wings in heraldry. Cool. All right. Last one, Kyle. Yeah. The Scandinavian lindworm. <gasps> Is it like Paul Lind? He's just always making jokes like this. Oh my God. <laughs> really speaking to our 70 plus audience. Yeah. Here, <laughs> yeah, I know. I got those OG Hollywood Squares fans out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, lindworm. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a worm. It's a verm. So I'm yeah. going to go no legs. I'm going to go like 10 plus wings. Ooh, I like. And heads on both yours. sides. <laughs> it's on both sides. <laughs> yeah. I like yours a lot. Uh, but it does in fact have two legs, no wings, and a long oh. body. I mean, that sounds like the it's least just like coolest a, dragon. A big, long, giant worm <laughs> with two little stubby legs in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I, that sounds like an abomination is what it sounds like. Yeah. They are particularly associated with Swedish folklore, and they are also sometimes called main worms, M-A-N-E, after the sort of mane of like fins along the top of its body. It has a mane of fins? Well, like, you know how dragons or other, you know, serpent-like creatures sometimes have those little dorf dorsal fins running sure, along sure, their back? Sure, 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 sure. It's got yeah. that. I was thinking fish fins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crazy. I, I've literally never heard of that. And I, I, I don't think I'd ever want to come across any of these creatures in, <laughs> in real life or in D&D, frankly. I'm not, a, I'm not ready. Well, I'm still on we'll level see. three. <laughs> no. Um, yes, but those are just some uh, dragons from around the world. There are many, many more. Dragons are super cool. What else is super cool, Kyle? Our listeners are super cool. Yeah, Emily. they are. And they're so super cool that they're going to remember that they can find Butter No Parsnips on social media, on Facebook, and on Instagram at Butter No Parsnips Podcast. And they're so, so, so super cool <laughs> that if they like today's episode, they're going to consider giving us a five-star rating or review wherever they heard us. That's right. And if you really like today's episode, like some of our listeners, you can consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash butter no parsnips. Donating $5 or more earns you a shout out either on social media or right here on the podcast. Thanks so much to all of you. You help us make what we make. And with that, I've been Emily Moyers. And I've been Kyle Imperator. And this has been Butter No Parsnips. Thank you for listening to Butter No Parsnips. Butter No Parsnips is produced by Seth Glicksman, Emily Moyers, and Kyle Imperator. The theme music and additional music is by Kyle Imperator. If you liked listening to this episode, subscribe and give us a good rating and or positive review wherever you heard it. If you really liked listening, consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash butternoparsnips. There you can get bonus content you can't get anywhere else, like the monthly Patreon-exclusive podcast Buttered Parsnips. Your support means the world to us and encourages us to keep making more. Thanks in advance, and we'll be back next week.